Well, let's get more on the dangers of this escalating public health crisis with Dr. Barat Pankania. He's a senior clinical lecturer at University of Exeter Medical School. Dr. Pankania, thanks for talking to us. Uh, can you give us an idea of just how significant a concern this really is? Uh, how dangerous a stage of the disaster we are now entering? And in particular, what is it that you are most worried about? So, unfortunately, a lot of people have died, and unfortunately, a lot more may also die. It is a tragedy for the people of Libya, and such a shame that that country is, in, is split up in two parts. And I'm emphasizing uh, yeah, all these helpful. points. Yeah, that would be helpful, please. I'm emphasizing all these points because this is uh, 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 the background to why we had this disaster of mixed messaging. So, um, with regard to health, there are health re, uh, issues both from a communicable disease point of view and a non-communicable. Let me expand. So the communicable bits are those infections. Now, with regard to infections, of course, when you have pools of water everywhere, mosquitoes may breed. And then if mosquitoes are carrying malaria, dengue fever, Zika, those sort of things, then you can get problems. But the non-communicable things are also equally important. What I mean by that is, if you are living in a contaminated environment, then you may be exposed to unknown, unknown, unknown chemicals, radioactive material, or something. Or you may not be. We just don't know. So it is really important to work out that the environment isn't heavily contaminated. With regard to infection risk, we do what we have to do with regard to control of insects and other things. But the important bits would be sort out the water, sort out the sanitation. Uh, Dr. Pekania, we, we know that the International Rescue Committee uh, has said that at least 55 children are sick. How difficult is it to prioritize the highest risk groups in this sort of situation? Well, we have protocols and procedures for this. And empirically speaking, not knowing what is causing the illness, if I were on the field, I would say, well, the vulnerable people are the old, the elderly, the infirm, people with existing medical conditions. And then the other uh, uh, people at risk are also the extremes of age. So as you pointed out, the very young, the little babies, and of course, the elderly people. So those things we know and we know what to do. In terms of minimizing these dangers, then, uh, what is it that you want to see, uh, Dr. Bikani, in the coming days in the country? How would you be going about trying to uh, deal with this crisis right now? So this is a great opportunity, if only that peace can be brought to Libya. Libya was a prosperous, thriving nation. And this is an opportunity for Libya, East and West, to come together. The public health measures are, as I said, sanitation and water purification, the infection risk we can deal with. Finally, one more very important point, and I'm reminded of Haiti. So in Haiti, the United Nations troops were brought in from Bangladesh, and then they introduced cholera to that place. And to this day, they haven't been able to eliminate cholera from Haiti, and a lot more people died from cholera than they died from the earthquake. So we mustn't repeat those sort of mistakes of introducing a infection, which then becomes very difficult to manage in a place like Libya, which is war-torn and, in inverted commas, poverty. Yeah, the disaster clearly far from over. Thanks very much for that, Dr. Barat Pankani. They're talking to us from Bath.